WWE Crush Hour. I love this game. I remember I used to play it with my sister when I was a little boy. To this day, I'll still pick it up every few months and I'll end up playing it every day for a solid week or two. It feels great to play, the combat is very satisfying, plus I just love what it's going for. It puts forth this concept of wrestlers killing each other in cars, but it doesn't really go all the way because no one dies. Yeah, I love that. But I have heard people say that it's shit, that it's a bad game. Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you there's no possible way you could just like Crush Hour, but a thing I've noticed is people will make the game harder than it needs to be by not learning how it works. So, as someone with a lot of experience figuring out a playstyle that works for me, I've made a list for new or struggling players that'll help you finally destroy Vince McMahon's tyrannical empire and liberate Kane from the cookout. This is 10 tips to get good at WWE Crush Hour. Number one, you get basics. Crush Hour is largely a game you can pick up and play, but there will be things that can trip you up if you don't take a minute to figure out the controls. Let's get the very basics out of the way. I'll be going in the order of PS2 input first, then GameCube input second. To accelerate is X or A. To break is square or B. To use a turbo as circle or X. To use your special as triangle or Y. More details on this later. Press R1 or R to fire your default weapon. It's best to keep this button held. Press R2 or Z to fire weapons that you pick up. Press L2 or the control pad to scroll through the weapons you have equipped. L1 or L is the power slide, which allows you to drift and do quick turns. It's worth noting that this same function can also be achieved by using the brake button. Other things to note here are the visual clues that someone has a power up. Invulnerability makes vehicles transparent. Double damage causes a reddish light to emit from the vehicle and armor gives vehicles a shiny silver shell. All three are timed power-ups, so it's best to wait them out instead of engaging, especially with invulnerability. Now that we've brushed up on that, we can get to some strategy. Number 2. Respect the Turbo. Turbo isn't always the easiest thing to control. It can be your worst enemy if it sends you into harm's way, but if you use it wisely, it can become your closest ally. You start with three turbos and can get a maximum of six from stage pickups. Scarcity won't be an issue, but it's best to save using turbo for when you need it. Like when you need to get away from enemies. Or to get to items first. Or to put some oomph behind your rams. Where turbo really pays off is in stages with non-melee objectives that require speed, like you see here in the cage match stage. Or in stages like Lumberjack and Running the Gauntlet, where you collect stars. The key to victory in these stages is mixing good turbo use with precise hard breaks and quick turns, as well as a little bit of bravery. Number 3. Keep an eye on the hood. Again, these are basics, but they can be taken for granted. The HUD shows your health, your turbos, what weapons you have equipped, and how full your special bar is. 
all things you should pay attention to during a match. On the left are the scores. Seeing that someone's a point or two away from beating you can be great motivation to sense a victory. As you get deep into a match, it can be easy to get so invested in hunting down a vehicle that you don't notice how low your health gets. You may also not notice that you have weapons that would help give you the upper hand in confrontations. Your default weapon should never be relied upon if there's anything more powerful in your arsenal. More on that later. For now, just remember to keep an eye on your HUD. It will help you use your items more efficiently and let you know when to retreat from a skirmish. Number 4 Small a plot in the water when you get near an opponent, you will see their health bar. Looking to other vehicles health bars will become one of the main clues as to how you should approach the situation. For example, if you see someone with their bar at orange or red, that's a signal to drop whatever you are doing and hold in on them immediately. Picking off the weak is crucial to racking up points. AI behaviour often compels vehicles to run for health when they're near death. If you're in a good position to chase them down, you can easily finish a job. Don't be shy about stealing kills from your opponents either. They wouldn't give a second thought about doing it to you. Number 5 Gather weapons at all times! If the AI or it feels too harsh, it's likely because they're hoarding all the weapons. You just gotta get to the weapons before they do. When you're under heavy fire, it's normal to panic and go for health. But if you're not gathering weapons while on the defensive, you'll find it really difficult to turn things around. Try not to pass up on any items you see in your path. There are certain areas like the outer platforms in bottom line, or the pyramid in hell in a cell which offer easy opportunities to stock up on equipment fast. Don't be afraid to take all other pickups like health, turbos and armour too, even if your car is doing fine. Remember, in Crush Hour, you should pick stuff up not because you need it, but so nobody else can have it. Many weapons like the Verf gun and laser guided rockets have multiple shots. While being conservative with your ammo may seem wise, with how fast paced Crusher is, there's not really a strategic benefit to spacing out these shots. If you have an opponent in your line of sight, go ahead and unload on them. Leave no trace of their existence behind. Every vehicle in Crush Hour attack from the front, so it's key that you minimise the damage you take by attacking them from other angles. By manoeuvring yourself around a vehicle, you can attack their side, their back, their roof, or even their undercarriage, all prone to your weaponry. It also helps to pin your blindsided opponent against the geography. Cheese is a great source of protein. Tell me what's in to love Instead of butting heads with other vehicles, take advantage of your opponent's blind spots. The HP you preserve by jerking around may end up saving you the match. Worship ramen power! Ramming power is the best weapon in the game. 
With ramming power, you can bring healthy vehicles to their knees in just 2 or 3 rams. You won't even need to use turbo, just a nudge will crush all opposition. Plus, it's the perfect weapon for turning it tight when you're in trouble. Ideally, normal rams should be incorporated into your offensive strategy to supplement your gunfire, stop opponents in their tracks or to make sure they're in the path of weapons like the atomic drop. Ramming power rewards solid fundamentals by turning the most basic attack into one of the most lethal. Ramming power. Learn to love it. Number 8. Know your special! To really make your special count, you gotta know how to wield it. Some specials, like canes or tests, are straightforward projectiles. Others, like William Eagles, are arch projectiles, which may need more precise aiming. Then there are area of effect specials, like Undertakers or Latas, where you should try herding multiple opponents into your immediate vicinity to maximise kills. It's important to keep in mind as well that some specials, like Brookwood here, may not be insta-kills if the projectiles end up spreading out among various targets. Familiarise yourself with the nature of your vehicle's weaponry, play your cards right, and you can use your special to pull off some highly satisfying victories. Even just by playing a stage once or twice, you can get a feel for where everything is. The AI will know where to go for health and weapons, so it's a big help if you do too. In these clips, I'm in danger of getting killed, but by escaping into the tunnel and getting the weapons stashed there, I reverse my fortunes. Here especially, the aforementioned ramming power would surely destroy me if I didn't think to get the nearby twisted rockets. In stages like running the gauntlet or royal rumble, there are only so many spawning locations for the collectibles you need. You can get a feel for what the fastest route is to each spot. Particularly in the royal rumble, you can just camp right next to them. Many stages have hazards, which by default deduct points if they kill you. This includes falling off of the stage, as this short montage will show. Hazards will probably end up getting you here and there, but if you keep them in mind, that's half the battle. The other half is not falling into the pits of hell, like I did. This tip is for whenever you play by tag team rules, which by default you encounter in the Survivor Series stage. When the wrestler tags out by touching the beacon, they heal roughly half of their HP, and their health continues to regenerate afterwards while they're on the apron, so to speak. If you get into trouble, always go for the tag, instead of hunting around for health. Conversely, it's best to lead the AI away from the center when attacking. Their logic will lead them to run once they reach low health, so making the journey as long as possible gives you the best chance of destroying them before they can get to their corner. Okay, that's all the tips I've got. I don't know if this will cover every single aspect of the game, but I think it will establish good habits and hopefully help with the difficult parts. I will be completely honest with you, the reason I made a Crusher video is because I watched New Legacy X video of the season mode and I got mad that they shit on it. Because of that, I started out on this project subconsciously wanting to defend Crush Hour, which looking back would have been a recipe for a negative video. But as I went along and recorded footage of the game, I fell back in love with it, 
and I wanted to make something that celebrated this thing that I love. Crusher will have its problems, stuff that doesn't do well, or just stages that can be really frustrating, but man, I love it. I feel like Charlie on Fat playing this shit. So I hope then, if the video interested you, that you try it out for yourself, and you experience some of the joy this game has brought me for most of my life. Thanks for watching! Ah, oh, I almost forgot. One extra tip. The most powerful character in the game. It's Billy. Where do you think you're going?